Sure. So, um, Colby and Kale were both, they both had newborn screening done, but neither of them were captured on newborn screening. They had normal methionine levels, um, on newborn screening. And then a couple days after my daughter turned three, she started getting sick. And we just thought at first that it was a GI illness. Um, and then it just kept lasting. And so we um, ended up in the emergency room a couple times. We were admitted for, de um, for dehydration. And um, then she actually had a CT scan, which showed that she had a couple um, bleeds in her brain. And they were like, they couldn't explain that. So then we went to an MRI. Um, so this was over a span of about two weeks. Um, when they got the MRI done, then they immediately, someone came into the room where we were waking, waiting for my daughter to wake up from the sedation, and uh, our pediatrician told us that she had a very large blood clot in her brain, and it was something she was not familiar with, and she didn't really know, and she asked us where we would like to go, that we were going to be flown to a children's hospital. So we chose Seattle, because we do have some family out in Seattle, so we went out to Seattle Children's, and I, my daughter and I were flown out there. Um, and we, we stayed at the, in the ICU. Um, so she was on a heparin drip. And anyways, we were there for a week. And we ended up being discharged because all of her um, uh, blood work was normal as far as for clotting disorders. They couldn't explain to us at that time why she had this very large blood clot. Um, so then after we were discharged, then we were asked to follow up with Seattle Children's, which we did like a month later. They did further lab work, which is when they checked the homocysteine level and it was like in the 300s. So then um, we were in Seattle for a whole week doing other tests, and so we saw geneticists at that time and got the diagnosis of homocystinuria. Um, and then it was about a month later that we got my son in, and he was checked, and he also had homocystinuria. So both of the kids take medicine twice a day, um, so they're on betaine twice a day, and they're not sure if our kids well, they, they say that our kids are partially B6 responsive. So they take the B6, the B12, and the folic acid once a day, um, which ours is different. So we take the injectable B6 and B12 that are in little vials and pour them into a med cup and they drink them. So it's kind of a lot of, it takes us a lot of time to prepare medicine. Um, and then we do formula, which we prepare in the morning usually, and we divide it over three containers um, and mix it with coconut milk and one child likes Ovaltine, one child likes strawberry flavoring, um, and then they drink that throughout the day. Um, I would say our lives are very planned and scheduled. Um, it's hard to be s spontaneous um, with this, with homocystinuria. We have to plan for everything. It's, you know, you can't just drive somewhere and be like, oh, we'll just stop here and eat. Like, we haven't really perfected the restaurant thing, um, so we're always packing food wherever we go. I feel like the biggest challenge is the unknown. Like I really, really wish I could understand the homocysteine levels better and, and why, what makes them go up and what makes them come down because we do the same things, we're pretty regimented. Um, and like two months ago, my son's homocysteine level was eight which is amazing, and he's had some normal homocysteine levels in the past, and then a month later he was in the 80s, and he hasn't been in the 80s in probably since close to diagnosis, and there's literally no explanation. He wasn't ill, um, none of those things. So it's just for me, and I'm a registered nurse, and I feel like I have a pretty good understanding. Um, I just wish I could under, understand it better to better take care of my, my children. I think the th I worry a lot about the future and middle school and high school and our kids going off diet because we've had a, f um, a few doctors say that it's one of the hardest diets to follow and that's just really scary for a mom. Uh, my hope is HU, HCU Network America just keeps on going and thriving and building on what they've started. Um, and that, that we could have some enzyme replacement therapy. I mean, I'd love to have a cure, of course, but um, I just would like some better treatments out there to maybe allow for a little extra wiggle room in a diet. Um, that we can keep meeting like this. I can't tell you how amazing it was this weekend to meet other families with homocystinuria and other moms. Um, when we were diagnosed, 
there was no one. Like I had no one to reach out to. And so I just hope that we can keep growing as a little community and get to know each other better and just lean on each other. Um, I think that would be great. I feel like I learn the most from other moms or dads um, and the patients themselves. To be an advocate, I think advocacy is a huge thing. Like if you have a gut feeling about your child or you don't feel like something's right, you have to ask. And in healthcare as a nurse, I really see it a lot that if people aren't advocates for themselves, then stuff falls through the cracks and things don't happen. So I really think that being an advocate for homocystine area and for our kids or ourselves or whomever is really the, I think, gets you the best outcome.